Good evening. I pray you're well and staying safe. Today is Wednesday, uh, July 15th, 2020. We are again in our daily Bible study. We are in the book of Matthew and we've shifted very far forward to chapter 17, verse 24 through 27 and chapter 18, 1 through 4. So at this point, I'll ask you to pause this video to go get your Bibles. If you do not have a Bible at home, the link for today's Bible reading is in this email with this uh, video. So again, as it is always best, we should pray before we read the Gospels. Uh, so I'm going to read from the prayer of the Gospel that's read in the Divine Liturgy, every Divine Liturgy, before I read the Holy Gospel. So <clears throat> let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Shine in our hearts, O Master who loves mankind, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open the eyes of our mind that we may comprehend the proclamations of your gospels. Instill in us also reverence for your blessed commandments, so that having trampled down all carnal desires, we may lead a spiritual life both thinking and doing all those things that are pleasing to you. For you, Christ our God, are the illumination of our souls and bodies, and to you we are for glory, together with your Father, who is without beginning in your all holy and life-praying spirit, now forever to the age of ages. Amen. So, again, we are in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 24 through 27 and verse uh, chapter 18 verse 1 through 4. so let me begin when they had come to capernaum those who received the temple tax came to peter and said does your teacher not pay the temple tax he said yes and when he had come into the house jesus anticipated him saying what do you think simon from whom do the kings on the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers peter said to him from strangers Jesus said to him, Then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, Unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So, before we begin, really get into a couple of questions here about this gospel, because this is very uh, weird or a very strange way that everything's placed here. All right? Prior to all this, this one little weird thing about the tax and the fish and the money in the fish. It's like plopped in the middle of, like it makes no sense, right? You have, before all this happens, if you go back and read, the major event that happens is the transfiguration of Christ, right? Where he takes Peter, James, and John to Mount Tabor. And then the Christ is surrounded by the uncreated light and he's speaking with Moses and Elijah. And we know that whole story or parts of it, right? And but we were we were for the last week and the next week coming up, we're way back, right? We have all these Jesus teaching in the synagogues and we have the parable of the sower, right? So why the sudden shift all the way three, four chapters, maybe five chapters really, forward? Well again, we know that the lectionary changes sometimes for certain saints. Today we celebrate the memory of St. Circus and Ju Julita, and I'm going to tell about that story this evening at the Lives of the Saints class, obviously, and I hope you'll be there for that. Anyway, and plus, uh, by the way, Lives of the Saints are recorded and will be put on YouTube eventually. So, there's one little word in this gospel that has something to do with the saint, and the word is hook. But I want to talk about the passage and kind of what it means, why Matthew puts this little uh, pericope in the middle of all this story, in the middle of Jesus telling about his death, the transfiguration, all, and then, and then we have begin with, all of a sudden jumps to the disciples asking who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, because they just had a discourse before this little thing here about the tax. And we see it in Luke and Mark too, where they talk about the disciples having this discussion amongst themselves, and Jesus knows about it, and they go ask him. And Anyway, um, let me first start with this, right? So they're in Capernaum, and there's a temple tax, and Jesus has been there before and probably paid the tax before. 
And he probably walked past the tax collector and the tax collector said to Peter, hey, doesn't he pay tax? And there's a reason for that, right? There's a couple of answers. Jesus could say, uh, no, we don't pay tax. I'm the son of God. Only the son of God, right? Or in other words, it would be saying, he'd be making, Jesus, would make, Jesus would be making a very bold statement by saying he doesn't need to pay this temple tax. And he makes a statement. Now, here's interesting. Peter says to the tax collector, of course he pays the tax, right? Because they paid before. Jesus goes into the house now to find Jesus so we can pay the tax. Jesus, it's very clear here. When Peter had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him. He knew what he was going to say. And this is an important thing. And I would say, why does Jesus speak to Peter before Peter can ask for the tax? Matthew's pointing out that Jesus, is in, his anticipation of Peter and his question shows that he is God and knows these things ahead of time. Okay? Matthew's pointing to the omniscience of Jesus here and his same essence with God here. So before Peter can even ask the question, Jesus now asks him a question. What do you think, Simon? Right? From whom do the kings on the, of the earth take customs or taxes? From their sons or from the strangers? So the kings of the earth, he's separating himself. He's the king of, of everything. But let me ask this question of you. The kings, what do they do? And Peter said, well, they take it from strangers. Well, you said, said to them, well, then the sons are free. The children are free. The Son of God is free. God is the King. I am His Son. Why am I paying a tax? But now Jesus does something else that's very interesting. And the next question is, why would Jesus send Peter to a fish for a tax? Again, to show His power, right? Jesus says, look, instead of offending these people, let's pay their tax. But... I want you to go to the sea, Sea of Tiberias, which is near Capernaum. I want you to put a hook. You're a fisherman. The first fish that comes out, in his mouth, you're going to find the tax for both me and you. Now, what's very interesting is, it does never say, Matthew never tells us, because it stops right there. Matthew never tells us if he ever found the money. Most miracles you hear about Jesus is saying what's going to happen, and then the person is healed, or something happens, and the miracle happens. This is obviously a miracle, but we can infer here, most likely, okay, and we'd call it maybe a biblical speculation, right, that it happened. Jesus said it's going to happen, it happened. We don't need to know about it. The point is, is this little tiny passage, these four verses, shows us the power of Christ and him as the Son of God. It is Jesus is making the claim, not to the tax collector, but to Peter. Let me show you how I'm the Son of God. You pay the tax this way. I can pull out of my pocket, or you can see the, our, 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 our treasurer, he's going to give, no, 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 no. Go over here. This is what's going to happen. And Peter already knows. So Peter doesn't, there's, there's not even a discourse here. Peter says, what? What are you talking about? What? There's none of that. Peter, it can be all inferred without even saying a word by this time in the Gospel of Matthew, by chapter 17, that Peter said, okay, be right back. I'm going to go fishing. Right? So excuse the phone. Anyway, so the very next one is chapter 18, verse 1 through 4. And this is where the disciples ask Jesus about who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus finds a little child over here, brings him right in the middle of the center and says, here you go. Be like this child. Humble yourself like this child. That's how you become the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So, there's a whole long discourse after that. N that none of that is in today's gospel reading. The reason the gospel reading is set up this way, the reason this is taken out for today, is because of the St. Syracuse and Ju Julita. So, but I wanted to show you that very interesting thing that Matthew puts in the middle of this whole thing. So, uh, may God bless you always. Have a beautiful evening. Remember, God loves us all. Good night.